Part two. I in fact don't even need to touch any equations at all if I understand this answer correctly. When I'm solving for x equals negative 30, where is that on the graph? Are you getting sick of me talking about where it is on the graph yet? Are you seeing how important graphs are in this? We know where 30 is, right? There it is. Where's negative 30? It's going to be just down below, right, on the opposite side. So if this is where negative 30 is, roughly, then the first time that the particle, what is this thing? It's a particle. It's going to be at negative 30 is all the way over here. Right, do you see that? So have a look at where that is on the graph. It's roughly there. Now, I said you shouldn't need any equations to get this answer, right? Have a look. How are you going to work out where that is on the basis of this piece of information? Say that again, Paul. Plus 12. Plus 12. What's going on here? See this little distance, right? The 0 0.965? You can clearly see it's mirrored in this distance here, right? There is all this symmetry around simple harmonic motion, which is why we like it so much. It's really nice to work with. So if those distances are the same, then to get to this new answer, x equals negative 30, whoop, sorry, x equals negative 30 when the time is equal to that, that time, 12 seconds forward. Does that make sense? So I can just write 12 plus 12 on pi sine. And I can say that from the graph because I have a good graph and it actually visually argues that for me. Of course, you could go through the whole process and work this out by the equations, but I think this is rather more efficient and elegant as well. OK, before I move on to the last part, part C, does anyone have any questions on this part? Because it's weird. It's confusing. And you needed some time on it. OK, again, just like before for part C, I'm going to leave that equation there. And I'm going to start you off on it and get you solving it before I then show you myself. Okay? So part C says, find the first two times its speed is half its maximum speed. Its speed is half its maximum speed. Now, I have a velocity equation here. It's not a speed equation, okay? but I'm going to use the velocity equation and just think about it carefully with my pluses and minuses. That's the difference between velocity and speed. right? What is the maximum speed? You can just read it off, right? It's 10 pi. Right? So I'm going to get on my way to finding the solution to this by saying, when is this, which is the velocity, when is this equal to half of that, which is, which is, what was the maximum speed again? 10 pi. So half of that will be 5 pi. Okay. Now, again, you have to be careful because the solution to this equation is not the answer to our question. Let me say that again. The solution to this equation is not just going to be the answer to our question because there's more to it than that, right? This only solves for when the velocity is equal to that. But the velocity could be going the opposite direction and it would still be okay, right? And we want the first two times. So they're clearly talking about when it's changed direction, it's going the other way, okay? So I'm going to let that, that sit there as a start. You can solve for a time, but then I want you to think about how do you use that to then work out well, what about the other time when you're going the opposite direction? Have a shot. Let Mrs. Lee's know. I know if you think you're in the right direction or absolutely confused and don't know. Now, I wrote this equation out, okay, without this graph to help me. It just so happens that that is fine, but I'm always going to encourage you to have the graph there. You'll see when we're having a look at the second, the second time um, that this becomes even more important in order to interpret what's going on. But if you haven't already, please go ahead and draw your uh, time velocity graph because it'll be very, very handy. Right? Now, they've said when is it the first time that it's uh, half its maximum speed? So 10 pi up here, this is the velocity, right? That's a spot at which, sorry, that's a time at which it is at its maximum speed. When is the next time, um, this is a different question to what we're being asked, but I just want to get a sense of the graph. When is the next time that we hit the maximum speed? This is time zero up here. When's the next time? The next time is going to be down here, isn't it? At this point here, the velocity is negative 10 pi, but that means that the speed is 10 pi, right? Does that make sense? So you're hitting the maximum speed here as well. You're just going in that direction rather than that direction. So I now want to solve when is it equal to 5 pi. What am I actually looking for? Uh, oops, wrong color. Here's 5 pi in here because it's, you know, half, so that's why it's half the amplitude. So I'm expecting an answer like here, right? 
thereabouts. So when I go ahead and I solve this equation, I divide through, I get cos of pi on 12t equals a half because it's, it's half of the maximum speed. At this point, this is a half and you're like, oh, I have exact values for this, right? So you can say pi on 12t should be equal to, what's the first answer you're expecting? For a half, think this is going to be pi on three, right? Thank you very much. 60 degrees, okay? But we're in radians, of course. So the time that goes along with that particular value is going to be four seconds, right? Now, let's just do a quick sense check before we um, think about this answer any further. Does that look like four seconds to you? Is your graph reasonable? Is my graph reasonable enough? Um, again, I'm going to have a look over here halfway just to get a smaller sense of the scale. That's 12. Yeah, that looks like I can go even further actually. That's 6 right there because you go half again. That looks pretty good to me. Are you happy with that? So I've done a very quick sense check to confirm. Now, I made sort of a big deal over here about how when you go from trigonometric functions to inverse trigonometric functions, you go from many, many solutions to just one, okay? And here, I never wrote down cos inverse, but I have just one solution. Why don't I bother looking for any more? Because I could, I could write, like, uh, what would the next one be? 5 pi on 3? 5 pi on 3. Why don't I bother writing that? Hmm. Yeah, I want the first two times, right? The first two times. Now, the next time I'm at 5 pi, you can see from the graph, it's way over here, okay? And that's going to be irrelevant to me. That's way too late. I want the first two times. It's all going to be on this end of the graph, okay? So now I can say, I've got another color here, the next time is not going to be when it's back to 5 pi, the velocity. It'll be when it's at negative 5 pi, like so, okay? Now, you could reach for your equations. In fact, I will do that just in a second to confirm it, but... Do you really need your equations? Have a look at the graph. Look, can you see, just like I did over there, can you see the symmetry here? Uh, one last color. See this distance here? Or that time, rather. It's a time distance on the graph. That time is how far? How long? From four to six. It's two seconds, right? And you can see from the shape of the graph that that's the same two seconds that you're going to see there. Does that make sense? So what answer are you anticipating? Eight seconds. That's what I'm anticipating. How can I confirm that? I have equations, right? So I'm going to go, I've solved this, this is done. I'm going to go cos pi on 12t. Oh, I need the other stuff, don't I? 10 pi equals negative 5 pi. I'm going to go ahead and solve. La -di -da -di -da -di -da. Now, this again also has an exact value. Do you know it well? Do you know it well? Think of what the cos curve does. It's going to be, it's 2 pi on 3, isn't it? 120 degrees? 2 pi on 3. You could use your calculator to double check this if you want. There's pi on 12. But you already can see, right, this is double what I had before. So that's why, sure enough, you get your 8 seconds. Okay? So I asked a few of you before. You like crunched through the equations. You got an answer, right? But may, very few of you could say, yes, I absolutely can conclude. Yes, I'm confident in this answer. But I think the graph is going to be your best thing to lean on, to not just say, yes, I can convince someone else, but I can say, yep, I'm happy in this exam context, I can move on now, okay? So, um, questions will not usually take that long. This is still really early on, and you're starting to be familiar with the kinds of language that they use and how to use the graph. They've never asked me to graph at any point, but hopefully I've convinced you by the way I've done the question, how instrumental and useful the graph is. Uh, it's just beneficial, just do it, it takes, so quick, even if you just draw a rough one, okay?